Hello everyone and welcome to Planet Linux. I am so glad that you found this video because I have some big news. I have downloaded the latest daily development build of what will become Ubuntu 17.10 and it is now officially running GNOME as the default desktop environment. If you've been living under a rock for the past while, you may not have heard that Ubuntu 17.10 will be the first release to officially ship with the GNOME 3 desktop by default instead of Unity. Um, and there are a multitude of reasons for this, but basically, long story short, Canonical is shutting down Unity as well as Ubuntu Touch and uh, switching back to the GNOME desktop. Whether you love or hate this, it is definitely big news, and I'm running one of the first uh, daily development releases here, um, which is current as of June 14th, 2017. One of the first to have the GNOME 3 desktop as the default. And it's certainly not perfect at this point, but it does give a great taste of partially what Ubuntu may look like in 17.10, switching back to GNOME. And this is a very vanilla experience, you'll notice. A very vanilla GNOME experience out of the box. And I want to mention that this is not necessarily how it will be come official release. The Ubuntu team has stated that they are looking to put in some additional tweaks, potentially extensions. It's hard to say exactly what at this point, but they have hinted that they want to quote unquote make the transition easier from Unity to GNOME. So they will be modifying this GNOME experience a bit. We don't know exactly how at this point, but um, nonetheless don't get too concerned if you're not a huge fan of a vanilla default GNOME 3 because this is not necessarily how it will look uh, come official release. I just figured it's really important to get this video out there now showing, yeah, they've got GNOME 3 working on here. They've got the majority of their Ubuntu theming in place. And I say the majority, you'll see why in a minute. Um, but overall, this is a pretty usable system. I want to note that desktop icons are enabled by default, which is good because in Ubuntu proper previously that's always been available so we can create icons here um, there just aren't any by default and I don't know why uh, they didn't put the home in the trash icons like they normally do but they didn't now of course let's minimize this for a second here because um, we can enable those through the GNOME Tweak Tool, which is another thing that was not installed by default, which is strange because the Tweak Tool comes default in GNOME now, so it's possible that will be in come official release, but it wasn't in here by default. I did install it, so you can of course go into the Tweak Tool uh, under the Desktop tab, and you can choose to enable the Home and Trash icons. Uh, you can also do Mounted Volumes if you'd like. I don't remember if that's done by default in Ubuntu or not. I don't believe so. So here's a bit more like your typical Ubuntu desktop that you may be used to seeing. As you can tell, they have gotten in the Ubuntu mono icons here. And as we saw in Nautilus, they've got the ambience theme in place. And honestly, I think it looks pretty darn good. I'm, I'm impressed with it. It's uh, come over to GNOME 3 very well. Um, along with the theming, they of course do finally have some updated applications that they'd been holding back on updates with Unity. They're really switching over to the typical GNOME suite of applications that you'd see, Nautilus being one example. They had been kind of holding back on an earlier version of Nautilus for the longest time, whether it's because they just didn't like uh, what was implemented in newer versions or not, it's hard to say, but they do now have what I believe is the current latest version of Nautilus, which they're of course calling Files 3.24. Uh, this is running GNOME 3.24. They're hoping come release date that they may be able to implement 3.26, uh, 
which will be coming out in September, but we'll see how that goes. Now, I did mention this ambience theme, which Radiance is also available if you were a fan of that. It looks very good. However, not all of the theming is complete yet. You may have noticed that the Gnome Shell theming, for example, the theme along the top bar here, as well as in the uh, overview, it's just using the standard uh, Adwaita shell theme. And so the all of the gnome shell sliders and progress bars and stuff like that are still blue and it doesn't really fit with the ambient oranges and purples that you find in Ubuntu so obviously that's something that they've yet to implement and I'm sure they will as we get closer to release keep in mind this is one of the first development builds that's actually running the gnome desktop so it's very early uh, if you decide to get this build, which I don't recommend doing unless you're doing it for development purposes because these things can be really unstable and you don't want really anything important on here because it could break something. But if you do end up deciding to get this build and you really want the more complete look for the theming, there is a Gnome Shell theme available called United and I may be able to pull it up here very quickly. It's, it's not an official Ubuntu theme But it looks very good. It's it's meant to uh, look like it, and I believe this is it here. Uh, yes. So you will see here the uh, toolbar along top here is kind of a slight purplishy translucent. They've actually enabled the dash to dock panel over here on the side. Um, can ignore that. But you'll see over here in this menu, which, as I mentioned currently, is these blue standard Adwaita themes. Um, as you can see, it's much more like a uh, ambience Ubuntu theme. And so if you really want uh, oops, if you really want the Ubuntu look throughout the entire system at this point, and you have this build, I would recommend the United Gnome theme. You can get it on gnome-look.org and here of course is the link for it but you can just go to gnome-look.org and search for it. It's just fantastic to see uh, Gnome implemented in Ubuntu. It looks very good overall and they don't have all of the Gnome apps implemented in here yet. Weather is not here yet. Uh, you can install it, of course, from the Software Center, which it's pulling results from. That's nice. Um, but they have said that they are looking to get the full suite of GNOME applications in here, such as Weather and Clocks, which is also not installed by default. This is relatively low on installed apps, uh, from what I could tell. Uh, I mean, we've got a few utilities, of course, some games, of course, Amazon, which they've had for a while, uh, LibreOffice, um, update managers, of course, a lot of what you would see in Ubuntu previously, but they haven't done anything to this point with the GNOME-based applications that come typical of GNOME. Uh, if we go into settings here, this looks similar at first glance to what we've seen in the past, but you have to remember that these are now all standard GNOME based dialogues. So here where it says background, this was previously appearance and it would open up a Unity page for the de desktop background and theme. Now this takes us to the standard GNOME background chooser here. Um, they'll of course be updating these wallpapers. Come official release. This one actually looks decent. Yeah, it will. Not stick with that. Sure, that looks good. Uh, I do want to know, I, the lock screen background here, it doesn't do anything at this point, because currently in the build I'm running at least, they're still using the uh, LightWM login manager that they've used in the past with Unity, and that has its own theming, and so this currently doesn't do anything, the lock screen wallpaper. Uh, but I would imagine that's something they'll implement in eventually. But yeah, just keep in mind that these settings now all go to their GNOME-based 
settings pages. So for display here, this is what you typically see in GNOME 3 as opposed to what was previously in Unity. In some cases this is good because there are some additional functions that GNOME 3 has had that Unity got stripped out of it. And while a lot of those were added, not all of them were. For example, this night shift, which uh, lets the screen um, don't know what I'm saying. Let's you uh, it's like a blue light filter that you can enable and I don't know if it will show up here in the video or not. Uh, what time is it? I should be able to yeah so this will not show up in the video. Actually it won't even show up. I'm running this into virtual machine because I didn't want a chance at screwing up a computer. Um, so it won't even work in the virtual machine. But, uh, yeah, little features like that that are included in the GNOME settings that you didn't have in Unity. So it's kind of nice in a lot of cases. Um, you know, if you hate GNOME 3, then you may not like this. But I think that as time rolls on, we'll see some additional tweaks and modifications done to the default GNOME desktop that make it feel more like Ubuntu. It makes that transition from Unity to GNOME a bit easier. Uh, so if you've liked Ubuntu in the past, I think that in the end, when this is released, I think I think you'll appreciate it. Um, obviously, this is still very early, so there are a lot of things that need to be ironed out, especially the theming. They need to get all the apps in, um, things like that. So, long way from perfect, but it is a great start, and I'm glad to be able to show it to you all today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Um, I'll probably end up doing another one of these videos uh, in a couple months uh, as we get closer to release to kind of check back in and see what Canonical has done from now to that point in preparation for the release in October. If the re current release date stands, it's expected Ubuntu 1710 will release October 19th. So, we'll be checking in before then. Of course, I'll have many more videos to come in between now and then. If there's anything you'd like to say, please post it in the comments. I'll do my best to reply to you. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It helps me, and it helps you, because you get updates for whenever I post new content. I'll see you all in the next video.